but you were busy making money. You were busy with other things, and there was no room at the end of your life, innkeeper, because you're the innkeeper of your temple, and you can make room if you desire, and if you desire, you'll clean that stuff up, lay it down, he'll come in, and he will make his abode there, and you shall receive Salvation is free. The anointing will cost you everything. Acts chapter 1 8, you shall receive power. Turn with me to Acts chapter 9. There was a man called Saul in the New Testament, but he got a name change on the road to Damascus. See, it happens in an instant. Saul chapter 9, Acts 9. Acts 9. Is, this, is this okay? Are we, we flowing okay? Yeah. Yes. Come, Holy Spirit, to the next level, we pray. Yes, visit us, visit us, visit us, visit us, visit us, visit us, visit us. Just raise your hands up unto the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, come, 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 come. Come, Holy Spirit. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. God is marking people right now. He's marking people. He's marking them. He's marking them. He's marking them. Lord, release the mark of the ink horn of the Lord upon that forehead. Thank you, Jesus. People are concerned about the mark of the beast. Get focused on the mark of the Lord. Because if the mark of the Lord comes upon you with the ink horn of the Lord, you don't need to fear the mark of the beast. Multiplying fish and loaves and things will come forth from your hands because you're not one who just knows the acts of the Lord. You know his ways and his acts now flow through you unto the people. Mark them, Lord. Mark them, Lord. Mark them, Lord. Mark them, Lord. Mark them. Mark those that are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Say, Lord, mark me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're shifting, we're shifting, we're shifting. We're going to go to Ezekiel 9 for a second. Ezekiel chapter 9, if you will. Praise God. Have you been marked? Have you been marked? And he cried also, this is Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1, and he cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, every man with his destroying weapon in hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man had a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed in linen. Say linen. Linen stands for righteousness with a writer's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar, and the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side, and the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, through the midst of the church in Montague, Michigan, Let's make it personal. This isn't an academic teaching. This isn't just another message to take notes on to preach to somebody else. This is about you and him personally. It's about being changed into another person. It's about the Spirit of God coming upon you. Endued with power from on high. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, through the midst of Montague, Michigan, at the Rock Church, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men and women that sigh and cry for all the abominations that are done in America. Praise the Lord. Something's beginning to happen. 
for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. Verse 5, And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man or woman upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary, says the Lord. Say long, pause, and reflect. We got John 3.16. We're born again, aren't we? Right? It's time to move forward. It's time to take the next step. Well, David, what is the next step? I'm glad you asked. The next step is all the way. Are you about to buy the field? When a man saw the field, he sold everything he had and he bought the field. Christian, they're coming for you. What are you going to do when they come for you? Are you going to have the same power when they started to come for them in the upper room? But something had happened to them. They had been changed from being fearful and running from the world, hiding in an upper room. When power came upon them, they were no longer afraid of the world because they came running out and tongues of fire had separated upon each of their heads and they had been filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues and they began to get up. And Paul, Peter said, this is not <coughs> drunken men, but this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel in the last days. Say the God. Look at your neighbor say last days. I want to share something with you. If the power of God came at Pentecost, 